Look, it's not how I pictured it either, but I'm still glad we're doing it. Me too. Well, they're at least half right. Leonard and Penny's wedding certainly didn't turn out to be what anyone was picturing, but whether fans were ultimately glad the couple took the plunge was another story. Because amazingly, the matrimonial momentum found a way to turn one of the most anticipated moments in the show's history into the centerpiece of the worst episode of The Big Bang Theory. We have the rest of our lives to dredge up stuff from the past and fight about it. <laughs> but before we get into our own big theory, why not take a moment to subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel? Leonard, Sheldon, Howard, and Rajesh were all pretty stock nerd caricatures. And given their astronomical IQs, Penny was often left looking like a stereotypical dumb blonde. A marathon? Wow, how many Superman movies are there? You're kidding, right? <laughs> but in the pilot, they all came off with a surprising amount of charm. It ended up with Leonard falling head over heels for Penny, and their love story would become a central element of a show that would run an astounding 12 seasons for a total of 279 episodes. By the end of season 8, Leonard and Penny were engaged, and Sheldon had found love with Amy Farrah Fowler. In that season's finale, Sheldon calls his friends out for their failure to set a wedding date, so Leonard and Penny make the spontaneous decision to elope. It's a joyous moment for the characters and the audience. But on the way to get married in Vegas, Leonard confesses to kissing another woman in an isolated incident years earlier. Would you rather I didn't tell you? No, I don't want there to be secrets between us. See, now I'm confused. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? Uh, keep your mouth off other women. Penny doesn't call off the wedding, but it's pretty obvious she's not taking it well. At the same time, after another of Sheldon's typical acts of bizarre insensitivity, Amy tells him she needs some space to reconsider their relationship. The audience then learns Sheldon was planning to propose to her, and the season ends on a double cliffhanger, with both couples in a precarious spot. The episode was particularly well done, and its cliffhanger is effective, because there's so much love apparent in both relationships. The characters' affection for each other is evident throughout, and Leonard and Penny's decision to get married provides a nice emotional high for fans who are really invested in these couples. Audiences went into the summer break wondering how the conflicts would be resolved, and what they got was the matrimonial momentum. Where are the rose petals? We're out! We can use the potpourri from the bathroom! Okay. It really, we're good. <laughs> yep, just wanna get married. Yeah. Leonard and Penny arrive in Vegas and await their nuptials at a typically chitsy Vegas wedding chapel that's next door to a strip club. The atmosphere couldn't possibly be less romantic, and they're both painfully aware of it. From the first beat, it's also clear that despite her reassurances to Leonard, Penny isn't particularly happy to be there, and even Leonard seems surprisingly unenthused about marrying the dream girl he's pursued for nine years. The conversation in the car sapped everything of its magic, and it feels like they're just going through with it because it's what they had planned to do, thus the titular matrimonial momentum. When it comes time to say their vows, the ones Leonard writes are couched purely in terms of science. I like to think those atoms traveled 14 billion years through time and space to create us so that we could be together and make each other whole. It's consistent with his character, and Penny obliges him by acting wowed, but despite his years of love for her, they're totally impersonal and he kind of delivers them like someone reading a greeting card. Penny uses the lyrics to Randy Newman's You Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story. Is that the song from Toy Story? He loves that movie. I do. <laughs> it's the only truly sweet moment in the whole wedding sequence, but we know she did it because she didn't have anything emotionally honest to say at the moment, so even that is kind of heart-wrenching. They return to their hotel where he carries her over the threshold, and they try to act like everything is alright, but when they go to kiss, the truth finally becomes unavoidable. She's still angry about what he confessed. It causes a fight and the two head home to their separate apartments. There was nothing inherently wrong with the idea of Leonard and Penny's wedding being a disaster in one form or another. The writers were trying to create a situation where both Leonard and Penny, scared of getting married for different reasons, are trying to subconsciously sabotage the wedding. The problem is there's nothing funny about that. So almost the entire wedding sequence is just uncomfortable to watch, which is of course by design, but that discomfort is never alleviated. And the episode's B plot doesn't help because it's arguably even less fun to watch. While Leonard and Penny are doing their thing, Sheldon shows up at Amy's after she told him to give her space, and is, as usual, unrelentingly self-centered. It's only been 11 hours! The Lord of the Rings trilogy was nearly 11 hours. I made you watch that, you said it was an eternity. He then follows her to Howard and Bernadette's house, even though he knows he's not invited, and insists on being let in even though everyone has made it clear it would be awkward. 
Once they do relent and bring him inside, Sheldon quickly insults Amy by implying she's getting old. Well, you should think fast, because men can sire off spring their entire lives, but those eggs you're toting around have a sell-by date. <laughs> Prompting her to dump him and run off. After everything has died down, Sheldon visits Penny for coffee, but gets angry at her and storms out because she didn't try to talk Amy out of dumping him. The episode finally ends when a defeated Leonard laments to Sheldon that he didn't picture his wedding night turning out like this. Really? I never imagined any other way. <laughs> the whole thing is just kind of depressing. The episode ends on a downbeat, but that's not its problem. The problem is that the matrimonial momentum is pretty much nothing but downbeats. This is partially explained by the fact that it serves as something of an unofficial two-parter with a subsequent installment, the separation oscillation. At the end of that one, Leonard and Penny reconcile and decide to stay married, which is nice, but saving that resolution for the second episode of the season left the premiere in a tough spot. The matrimonial momentum had to ruin Leonard and Penny's wedding, without fixing things by the end. But in addition to being denied a happy ending, the episode was also denied the comic relief of a lighter B-plot. Instead, the B-plot is busy adding to the bad vibes by breaking up another fan-favorite couple, and doing it in a way that didn't make Sheldon look so hot. His behavior toward Amy comes off as sexist, especially in combination with his misogynistic rantings to Leonard. The show writes it off as Sheldon's general social dysfunction, but it's hard not to notice that his anger in this episode frequently takes the form of a generalized hatred of women. And you know why? Because you're a man. The champagne of genders. <laughs> and like the main storyline, the B-plot also doesn't have a lot of laughs in it. And it's not for the lack of trying, but the writer's attempts to wring humor for moments like Howard comparing Amy to an abusive victim, or Stuart creepily showing sexual interest in both Amy and Penny at inappropriate times, fall flat. Especially in the serious story context of an ugly breakup. The problem is also weirdly exacerbated by the show's laugh track which seems to find everyone's heartbreak laugh out loud uproarious. Listen, I may not have been entirely faithful, but you, you are not easy to lift. <laughs> the whole thing is especially disappointing because of how well the show's writers handled similar stories in the past. Take for example season three's The Wheaton Recurrence. That episode also features Leonard and Penny navigating a relationship problem, a scene where Sheldon comes to talk to Penny about those troubles, and an ending where the couple breaks up. Whereas the wedding episode is relentlessly downbeat, the Wheaton recurrence chooses its moments when it comes to delivering the sad stuff, which makes those moments much more effective. The love between the characters is also unmistakable, which stands in stark contrast to the matrimonial momentum where everyone seems a little extra insensitive to each other. The earlier episode is also consistently funny, features a hilarious B-plot with guest star Will Wheaton, and ends on a light-hearted sight gag. I gotta call you back, I wanna bet, and it's time to collect. <laughs> the wedding of two beloved characters fans had been following for over eight seasons wound up being joyless. For what it's worth, the show did try to make the botched wedding up to fans a year later when Leonard and Penny had a second wedding in the season 10 premiere, The Conjugal Conjecture. And that was probably always the plan. But while the second wedding could fix things for Leonard and Penny, it couldn't change the fact that the show's audience first had to sit through one of the least fun TV wedding episodes of all time. So what do you think? Was the matrimonial momentum the worst episode of The Big Bang Theory? And if it wasn't, what was? Let us know down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely find others you like if you check out the rest of the channel. As always, thank you for subscribing to Nerdstalgic.